Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. I'm a psychiatrist in private practice and faculty member at the University of Virginia. Each week, my guests and I talk about meaningful coincidences, synchronicity, and serendipity. We discuss synchronicity from its many, many perspectives, spiritually, practically, and statistically. Why? We want to help you increase your connection to coincidences so that you can benefit from coincidence awareness in your daily life. I've written a book also called Connecting with Coincidence. Put that phrase, Connecting with a Coincidence, in your web browser to find my book, Psychology Today blog, website, and social media sites. If you want to know how sensitive you are to coincidences, go to my website to take the Weird Coincidence Survey. Connecting with Coincidence, Synchronicity, Spoken Here. Our guests today are the McGregors, Rob and Trish. The McGregors have been professional writers of both nonfiction and fiction since 1984, and they've been on this program. They're the second returns that we've had on this program. Glad to have them here. They've written extensively on the pursuit of inner paths. Their nonfiction books on synchronicity, dreams, the tarot, yoga, astrology, divination, and animal symbolism reflect such inner journeys, and they are prolific writers. Their newest book is Sensing the Future, How to Tap into Your Intuition and Read Signs from the Universe to Predict What's to Come. In August, their book, Secrets of Spirit Communication, will be published. Trish, as T.J. McGregor, is the author of 42 novels and in 2003 won the coveted Edgar Allan Poe Award for her novel, Out of Sight. Rob is the author of 19 novels, including the New York Times bestseller, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and six other Indiana Jones novels. Welcome back, Trish and Rob. Good to be here. Thank you. Good to be here. (laughs) Well, and you tell me what you want to start with, but I want to ask a question first before you get to the question. How does the precognition, the ability to glimpse the future... Uh, relate to synchronicity? (laughs) Well, the way we see it is that synchronicity is like an umbrella that uh, covers all the other basic uh, psychic phenomena, precognition, telepathy, um, all of it, remote viewing, viewing, uh, or clairvoyance. And so there's similarities. So, uh, an experience could be, hey, that's a synchronicity. But when you think about it, well, it could have been a telepathic or it could have been a precognition because it happened just a short time afterwards, you know. So it's it's the way it's it's the way you look at it, I guess. Oh, no, no that, 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 I understand that. And the word PSI, psi, is used as an umbrella term for uh, what you just described, precognition, par, uh, par, precognition and uh, psychokinesis, mm-hmm. as well as telepathy. Um, and uh, clairvoyance. Uh, th- th- I am. I use the word synchronicity to include those, as did Jung, but also as something more. There are some other. There are some other events that are more than psi events that uh, right. I want to be able to s- separate. And I'm glad yeah. we're, we, we need, the, the terms are very important, but uh, we, we don't need to spend much time on that. I just want to know what you meant. But one of the things that happens uh, with this radio program uh, is that coincidences t- cluster around them, uh, around, <laughs> this, around the show. And they happen occasionally. Uh, I write some of them down. But as you both know, uh, the more you think about coincidences, uh, the more they seem to happen or the more you see they're happening. I mean, I think they're both there. I think we help create them by thinking about them. And I think they're also happening like uh, there are certain producers or certain radio shows that have gotten t- tuned in to coincidences and now sees they're happening and asks this very question. Yeah, so, I agree. <laughs> so you had um, you've had. Um, Uh, You had one around me in this radio show, so tell us about that one. Okay, this this started on February 5th. Um, I had two coincidences, two synchronicities involving you. One was an an Australian blogging friend who who also writes about synchronicity mentioned he had done a listening binge to all 48 episodes for your radio show and loved it. Then I was looking at our stat counter 
on the blog and found that the Department of Defense Information Network had gone to one of your posts on our blog. So I wrote you and said, okay, you're on the DOD's radar. Yeah, and what does that mean to be on the DOD's radar for you? That's a good question. Because you are. (laughs) Are they spying on you now or something? Well, we had an experience a number uh, four years ago. We had written a book that involved synchronicity, aliens, and UFOs. And we got so many government hits on this thing that it, it really kind of started us. It was like, okay, got the DOD, the, the NSA, the C- FBI, the CIA. CIA. And and all the, these people came to the blog the, uh, reading this stuff. And the Canadian... Um, Royal Canadian Mounted Police right. parked <laughs> so, themselves so, so, on for eight, it, eight hours. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like what they're doing then is just doing casting a wide nut to see what's being talked about out there. Right, yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, so I'm, so I'm on the DOD. So DOD's now I got my name in there too. Okay, and thanks for letting me know that. It's nice to know. So please keep going with the. With the then on events. February 22nd, Rob wrote a post on a New York Times piece called uh, "It was called The Simpsons Have Predicted a Lot. Most of it can be explained," and you're quoted in that article. So okay, yep. there was another. And then February 26th, the night before I had started an astrology workshop that I was teaching, and one of the women on the 26th came to our blog and saw the post. Or no, first of all, she, she came to the blog. She had gotten something from the Rhine Institute saying that you were going to be presenting something. And she'd never heard of you. So she came to our blog, and there's your name. And then she says to me, she goes, you can't make this stuff up, Trish. <laughs> so that was, it was like a whole string of these things. I'd say probably seven synchronicities right. and then about the, this just in February. Then the next day... I was uh, putting together some questions for this show, and up pops uh, your birthday uh, notice uh, <laughs> on, on my Facebook. computer as I, uh, from Facebook as I'm writing. You know, when the, these pop-ups come up. Uh, so yeah, I know that one. <laughs> and you wish me a happy birthday, too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a very nice birthday. Thanks. Okay, that's 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 one involving around the show and around me, and I appreciate your describing that. Um, one of the other things that fascinates me uh, that you're tuned into is the relationship between creativity and precognition, and I I I like to quote um, that Edgar Allan Poe um, wrote about the Richard. Park, right, right, Richard Parker, oh, Richard Parker. Yeah, that's and, so- and how that paralleled something that uh, was about to happen. Uh, and um, the, probably the, to me, the best known one is the wreck of the Titan, as you mentioned too, by Morgan Robinson, that, right. Robertson, that predicted it in its way, uh, the wreck of the Titanic, even calling it the Titan and having the boat be around the same size and the arrogance being around the same and hitting an iceberg in the North Seas. Uh, and and many, short, they're both shorted, short on lifeboats too. And both <laughs> short on lifeboats. I mean, it, it and more. Uh, it's a tonnage of the two of them. It, how, <clears throat> how do you think that works? Well, in ter- I know how it works in terms of fiction because I've experienced it. But when you're writing fiction, if you're really plugged into your story and the characters and the whole thing, it's easier to tap into the future. I I don't know why that's true, but I know it is. (laughs) Um, Some years back, I wrote a book called uh, Storm Surge, and it was about a Category 5 hurricane that hit uh, uh, Miami. And the thing that was so disturbing about this, okay, this was, I sent it off to the editor on August 14, 1992, and it was Hurricane Alfonso that slams into South Florida, flattens neighborhoods, and devastates the coast. On the same day I mailed it, that, that was back in the days before email, um, a tropical wave moved off the coast of Africa that 10 days later became Hurricane Andrew, which, of course, flattened Homestead and destroyed uh, destroyed the area. Um, so... This this precognition was striking in a couple of ways. I mean, I had just finished the book, mailed it off, Hurricane Andrew formed, and on August 24th, I think it was, is when Andrew hit. So it was 10 days later. And so, so the novel didn't come out for about a year after that. And so one of the reviewers mentioned, oh, 
uh, this novel was inspired by Hurricane Andrew. <laughs> and questioning, well, was she taking kind of advantage of a disaster? <laughs> and no, you know, she wrote it before it happened. <laughs> And I had another experience, too. After that happened, I thought, okay, I'm never going to write about a hurricane again. But then in 2004, another hurricane idea knocked at my door. It was, what if a sociopath breaks his girlfriend out of the county jail on the fictional island of Tango Key as a Category 5 hurricane approaches the island? What if he and his girlfriend and another woman also uh, escape the prison and take refuge in the home of the protagonist during the storm. So that was my setup. Uh-huh. And the book came, uh, was going to come out, I think, in October of whatever this was, 2005. Uh, but on August 29th, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans as a Category 3 hurricane with winds up to 125 miles an hour. At its peak, not long before landfall, it was a cat five. So I thought, okay, here was another synchro. My editor calls me up and she says, Trish, they're desperate for people who know something about hurricanes. Will you do some radio shows? I thought, I don't know. You know, what I know about hurricanes is just my research for the novel. And we're, coming, I told to, we're yeah. coming to the end of this segment, and we're going to talk about hurricanes when we get to the next segment. Okay. You're listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. And our guests are Rob and Trish McGregor. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like x-zone sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Gwilda Wiak's latest book, The Science of Magic, Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is the first book in a series based on her writings that open every episode of the Science of Magic radio show. Drawing on the subject matter of each guest, and armed with over 40 years' experience in shamanism, 35 years in alternative health, and degrees in psychology and religious studies, Gwilda introduces relevant and leading-edge information that supports spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Rich with wisdom and inspirational quotes packaged in digestible segments, This is a book that will pull you from cover to cover. It will also serve as a daily inspirational reading for years to come. The Science of Magic Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is available at our website, tsompublications.com, amazon.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Welcome back to Connecting with Coincidence, 
with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, where we speak synchronicity. And our guests today are Rob and Trish McGregor, the prolific writers. And we're talking about right now precognition uh, related to their recent book on precognition, uh, being able to tell the future, and hurricanes. Now, let's go back a little bit. You, were, you, were, you had this, this, this great idea about hurricanes and a guy breaking his girlfriend or girlfriend <laughs> getting out of jail as the Category 5 uh, hurricane hit uh, one of the keys, a fictional key. Mm-hmm. And then, you, you, then what happened? Well, so anyway, I wrote the book. And it was due for publication in October of 2005. And on August 29th, 2005, a couple of months, like six weeks before, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. And there were some striking parallels between its pressure and the pressure of the hurricane in my book. Uh, the way it breached the levees, the same thing happened in my book. Now, again, th- this was, you know, there, there were parallels, and it, it totally freaked me out. Um, and then my editor called me, and she goes, Trish, people are, uh, radio shows are desperate for people to talk about hurricanes. Would you do some radio shows? And I ended up doing 40 shows in three days <laughs> trying wow. to talk about hurricanes. So, I mean, for me, it was like trying to explain this stuff, how, how you tap into something like this. It's difficult to explain, but it happens. Um, I'm going to uh, tell you what I, how I think about this, that um, when you, you get into a zone or a space right. or a mindset when you're writing, uh, and it's really fun to do it. Now, I, I miss it when I'm away from it, which I've been for a while. And just being able to tune in to something and you kind of – and stuff comes to you. Mm-hmm. And I think in that state, uh, it's a kind of a meditative state. Um, that we reach, we can reach higher into what I call the psychosphere, where ideas are, um, where I, where ideas are uh, available to us about the future and the past, um, and that we can get to them in in this trans state. And it's as many people describe themselves as being uh, receiving dictation. Mm-hmm. Uh, receiving the kind of the ideas from them uh, from someplace that's not them uh, right and I, I, the psychosphere is my name for a greater mind where i'm not i'm not trying to say it's it's the um the, the universe uh, the universe is so large that i don't like the i can't think of it it's too it's too much mm-hmm. billions and billions of galaxies and just let alone planets and stars but I'd rather have it be the psychosphere, be of the, our, our mental atmosphere around the earth, and that you tune in, as others have, to a flow that's like the Tao that you can pick up stuff from. Yeah, it happens in creativity, as you said, but it also happens when you have you know, uh, some incident in your life that uh, is dramatic. Uh, for instance, uh, one day... Uh, the story begins with a guy coming to my door, knocking on my door, and he he was looking for a lawn service, uh, or he was looking to sell me his lawn service, wanted me to uh, uh, have him mow the lawn, take care of the, the landscaping. And I talked to him for a little bit, and uh, I said, uh, well, he, uh, no, I don't really uh, need it. And uh, most of the people who come to the... Uh, the house uh, or do landscaping in, in South Florida are, are Latinos, uh, oftentimes uh, Mexicans or Guatemalans. But I, this man happened to be an Indian uh, from India. And it, this this relates to the story later on. So uh, uh, a few days later, I go out windsurfing on a local lake and I, it was a windy day and I was excited to get out there and I jump out there and I forget to take out my billfold, but I don't realize that I've done it, of course. I fall down in the water, and down goes the billfold, and I lose it. But I come to shore, and I, I'm looking around. I think it's on shore. I think it's in the car. I go back home. I think it may be in my office, uh, a drawer, and I look all day, nothing. And so it really seems like it's in the bottom of the lake, but I refuse to accept that, that it was gone. So s- several days go by, and I just have this feeling that – that billfold is going to come back to me. I don't take any action to uh, cancel my credit cards. Try, or... try to describe that feeling, Rob, because I think it's really important. I just had one like that last week. Yeah. I just had the feeling. Wait, try to describe that. 
it's it's difficult to describe. It's just annoying. That's how I can say it. It's just yeah. annoying that yeah, certainly. Person, yeah, I mean, ju just like another time a few years earlier, uh, our cat had been gone for over a week, and I said, Trish, that cat is coming back Saturday by midnight. <laughs> at Saturday, our next door neighbor knocked on our door at midnight and had the cat in her hand. She had seen it uh, out in the courtyard, picked it up. You know, I don't know how I knew that, but it was just this feeling, this certainty that that, that cat was going to come back. And it's the same that that billfold is going to come back. So uh, a few days go by and uh, I get a telephone call and uh, he, I say, uh, he, I, he asked me who, who it is. Uh, I, I tell him who, who I am, and he said, oh, I'm glad you're, or he asked me, are you Rob McGregor? And I said, yes. And he said, oh, I'm glad that you're alive. Uh, <laughs> I, I found your billfold in the bottom of the lake. I was fish, fishing with a net, and I thought your body might be down there as well. And then uh, he's, uh, he said, I, everything's here. Your money's still here. It's wet, but I'll dry it out, and you can come and get it. And it, I think it was like a late on a Saturday evening when he called me and I so we made an arrangement to go over to his house the next day uh afternoon so I go over there and I walk and it turns out I, I just walk in the house because there's a there's a party going on there's about 40 people there and everybody is uh from India they're Indians and uh I asked for the man's name and it turns out there's Three of them, I can't remember his name now, but there's three of them there. So I'm walking around, <coughs> looking at these women walking around in saris, they ask, offering me food. And uh, finally, I find, find the guy, and he has my billfold uh, money and everything. And I look at him, wait, I know you. You're the guy who came to my house uh, last week offering your service for landscaping. And and there was my... So what are the odds <laughs> of that one? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, so it was that feeling that that was going to come... Uh, come back to me, and uh, not only did it come back to me, but it's, it came back to me from a guy who I had met uh, days days earlier. I'm going to be talking with a statistician David Hand in a couple of weeks, and he's going to say what he says most of the time <laughs> that in large populations, low probability events have to happen. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now that, that's, in, in other words. Uh, those of us interested in synchronicity and those who are interested in statistical view of improbable events are talking about the same set of phenomena, very low probability events. And he wants to explain them by what they call the law, large, the law of truly large numbers. And we want to have some other explanations, at least for some of them. Right. Uh, I, I think hearing that story that the connection that the two of you established just by his coming to your door and you talking increased the probability of his finding the wallet for you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, he, David Hand would not would dismiss that because we don't <laughs> have an explanation for it. Uh, but that's that and have not having an explanation, uh, you can say in large populations, uh, low probability events are like to happen. But the feeling that you have about the cat and about uh, the billfold, those are additional pieces of information that this, that are subjective, which I don't think are part of the statistical evaluation. Yeah, I don't of think instances like that. this. Yeah, the fact that yeah. the fact that you told Trish about the cat. Is it would make it a much lower probability event. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and I was frantic. It was my cat, and he kept saying, "Don't worry, don't worry. The cat will be back. Cat will be back." And it was. And, <laughs> and the cat the came specific, back, and the cat and the came back. Specific time too. That that's what amazed me. That. <laughs> uh, that's. Uh, Bernard, that we is, we had ahead. something very strange that happened after the Parkland shooting here in Florida. Yeah, I was and, going to go to that too. What is it, what what a, what a, what a coincidence? Yeah, well, what happened was a couple of days. I mean, you know, when there's a mass shooting, that's your focus in the news and everything else. That's all you hear about. And the fact that it was just that it was close, you know, maybe an hour from us that this happened. So it was all over, all over the news and everything. Neighbors talking about it. So we were focused on guns. So two days later. Rob and I are working. It's a, a Friday night, I think. Friday or Saturday. Friday. Night. Friday. Friday. Yeah. Nine, and nine, about nine o'clock. Yeah. And he says, hey, somebody's in our yard. Now, we have a fenced yard with a gate. 
And as soon as he said that, I saw flashlights out in the backyard. I thought, what the heck? Who, who's back there? So our dogs, we have two golden retrievers, suddenly went nuts and barreled out of the house into the backyard. And there are two cops with their guns pulled. And the one cop says, ma'am, restrain your dog or I'm going to shoot it. I thought, oh, my God. All right. All right. So I grabbed Nigel and pulled him back in. I said, what's going on? Well, there was a robbery nearby and the thief came through your yard. And so here's the thing. If Rob, if we owned a gun and Rob had gone out there with the gun, he would have been shot. Yeah, I was the first one out. And I, I just saw this lighting situation is the light on the porch was on. That's where I went out the uh, from the family room onto the porch, which was lit. But the backyard was not lit. And I just saw two darkly dressed figures aiming guns at me. <laughs> uh, as, uh, and then one of them, uh, I think he is holding up a badge in his other hand. I couldn't see what it was. But then they say, please. I, I knew it was police again. I, ra I, I, I raised my hands to show him I didn't have anything. But boy, if I would have had a gun, maybe even my cell phone in my hand, I might have gotten shot. Yeah, we're, we're coming to the end of this segment. And uh, uh, you could have shot the police under sand your ground, uh, as they say in Florida. I don't think it would have worked. But that, <laughs> I don't think for other works. people, it does. You're listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And our guests are Rob and Trish McGregor. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com.
That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back to CC with BB, Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Dr. Bernie Beichman, MD, that's me. And we are talking today with Trish and Rob McGregor, who are stirring up a lot of stuff over there in their Florida home, I think. I mean, <laughs> I mean I, as I listen to you and uh, in, your intuitions about uh, things in probably different channels, of intuition, uh, but they overlap with each other, that uh, I, I begin to imagine stirring up the psychosphere and creating a little bit of a, a kind of a spiral thing, not a cyclone, but a spiral thing where the two of you are kind of connected up into it in ways that a lot of people aren't because you're, you're, you write so much, you tune in so much, and you think about coincidence and synchronicity so much that I think you're doing something. And I'm, I can't help but thinking, but that robber going through your, your yard is part of that parkland. <laughs> thing as you are indicating so how do you think they are related well i i think p- part of part of what i think happens with synchronicity is if you focus on it yeah. on, on anything an event a person that helps create the what you call the, the psychosphere for the synchronicity to happen and in this case unfortunately I, i'm not i'm not going to ever focus on guns again <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you that i mean this was scary poor nigel i'm he, he he was just protecting his property, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, and and there's his one of his owners trying to help him out yeah. uh, with a cell phone in his hand or something. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a dangerous country you live in there in Florida. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. And there was no way that that uh, uh, burglar had come into our backyard either, because I would have You'd have to uh, jump the fence. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have seen. Uh, that person, just like I saw the cops go by my window, and the dogs would have gone crazy as well. So, I mean, there was probably a burglar in the neighborhood, but they were just uh, uh, covering covering up their, uh, you know, not informing us that they were coming into our yard. I mean, they should have had one cop come to the front door, maybe, and told us that they they were going back there, so we wouldn't be... Uh, yeah, Surprise that somebody suddenly there's two men with gun, pointing guns at me in my backyard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, what I'm, what I'm asking about is your general sense of the two of you helping, uh, it, maybe inadvertently in this case, certainly inadvertently in this case, to run a parallel experience with what happened at Parkland. Yeah. Yeah, Seems... not the kind of a parallel experience I particularly want, but no, no. But it it does it did illustrate to me that if you focus on something, you may experience something similar. Yeah, and when you're writing about synchronicity itself, uh, that's when they they really go crazy. I mean, we ju- we can have a uh, half a dozen in, in the, the same day going on, or the and, same hour. <laughs> and, and some people will uh, have come to us and said. I've had two synchronicities in my life. I think, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, and the, they feel that's really important, really significant. But uh, you know, when well, for them it is. Yeah, you can. But when you're focusing on it, it really they they se- just seem to pop up, just like when we were preparing for this uh, this interview, how they were popping up w- uh, related to you. Yep. Um, and you, by implication, you can also know that uh, I see a coincidence or two uh, in my existence. <laughs> it's like on a regular basis, too. And now, how does David Hand explain that? Um, I, I, so I want to really get some good questions to him, not just about individual coincidences like the person who has two of them in their lifetime, mm-hmm. but people who experience a lot of them. Um, some of them, I, when I talk to people, they are filling in blanks to make things into more meaningful coincidences than they probably mm-hmm. are. Yeah. Uh, and David Hand talks about that. It's like uh, the uh, kind of the law of it's close enough, as he calls it. That people, if you if you want to see coincidences, you can find two uh, events that look that happen around the same time that look like they're related to each other. That and the similarity question is very important to me. Not just the timing; timing is very important, obviously. But similarity is also that that how much do we fill in the similarity sometimes to make it into something that we call a synchronicity when maybe it's just our desire to make it happen and see more of them that's an important question i think in this that is important we, we've run across people who 
see supposedly synchronicities in everything. And when they're relating it, I'm thinking, okay, I don't, I don't see how this is a synchronicity. To, to know, some extent, you know, synchronicities are very personal, personal. So it's meaningful to the person, but not to other people. But sometimes, you know, you can't really see how that person can see that as a synchronicity at all, because it, it, the, the two events, three events, whatever, just don't seem to connect at all. Uh, so we hear those once in a while. But well, I think David Hand listening to um, maybe the coincidences involving me could think of that as um, kind of a stretch too. That mm. it's it's the desire to see them. I, I think he would. I think he would do that. Uh, I mean, it's so easy to dismiss things. I, I yeah. talked to psychiatric residents about coincidences uh, on, a couple of days ago, and it was really a blank response from most of them. <laughs> uh, really? Oh, yeah. Um, but I would think that synchronicity would be really useful in psychiatry. I can't call it really useful yet. Hmm. I, can, I can call it um, uh, prevalent, that it happens happens in a lot of different ways well but, i mean look look what happened for young it was useful for him in helping that woman <coughs> with the scarab beetle thing well that's one story um, yeah i know <laughs> and, <laughs> but it's a great and, story and it's a great story and um uh, i i was uh, giving the talk at the rhine as we were mentioning and uh there was a as i was talking um a stink bug landed on the podium that i was uh talking from and the stink bug then started flying around in front of the uh, screen and the reason why that was kind of that was interesting to have this kind of connection with a stink bug is that a colleague of mine um, Michael Grosso who wrote the book about the man who could fly about St. Joseph of Cupertino um, had a relationship with a stink bug that he just, just told me a couple of days, a couple of weeks earlier. I mean, where they was communication appeared to be between him and the stink bug. Uh, That's so interesting. So, so I found that kind of fun to have a stink bug flying around right there. I mean, <laughs> stink bugs are around. And one thing David Hand said about Jung's um, scarab is is made us ask the question: Is how much how many beetle like uh, bugs uh, run into windows in Geneva around that time of year? Yeah. And you have to ask that question because we don't usually think of that. Right. Um, what's what, what's a, how many hit the windows and then this one hit it at just the right time. But that story and it was, was also a beetle, though, that was the closest thing Switzerland had to a scarab. Yes. And I mean, particularly that scarab eyed beetle in Switzerland. How many of those are how common are they? And, and they're fairly common, as far as I understood. And how many of them hit windows like that had to be part of the question. Now, David Hand says things like that to bring doubt to the question, because mm -hmm. we're so we're so impressed about the dream and the scare of like beetle hitting the window that we forget even that Jung helped create the coincidence by going to the window and opening it and bringing right. the scarab in. Sure. And, and, and that is a, that is a implicit, but we don't think about it. We used to think about the dream and the scarab showing up. But it, but it hit the window at precisely the exact right time. Yeah. And if you had a hundred scarabs hitting the window and he only went to the window for that one, then it looks like less probable. And I'm only making that up, but it's the right, the right time. But there could have been a lot of other times that that could have happened that weren't the right times, but still it happened. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it hit the, the right time. It makes a tremendously good story. And what, uh, what I think about it is that again, for our listeners, Woman had a dream about a scarab. It was very meaningful to Jung and to her. The scarab is a sign of transformation. Uh, and she was stuck in a rationalistic mode. And Jung wanted to get her out of there. So Jung was also wanting something to happen mm -hmm. to make that woman change from her, her retort of rationality into something more intuitive, which what Jung was trying to tell her about, or trying to get her to be able to do. And he said the therapy went well after that. So there's the scarab hitting the window. Jung goes to the window and presents the scarab to her just as she's just finished describing the dream. And that was such a surprise to her that she apparently became less rational uh, and what and more intuitive. And what I 
like a, what I wonder about this is that's a metaphor for what Jung tried to do for uh, for Western civilization, is break the retort of uh, rationality and bring intuition into uh, the Western world. Well, so you've heard about the Joseph Campbell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's synchronicity with the praying mantis. Now, what are the odds of that one? It was like the 15th floor, that praying mantis. In New York. Uh, in New York. In New York City, right. What was the light, What would be and, the likelihood of a praying he, mantis? He was writing about, what was he writing about at that uh, moment? Some tribe. The, uh, the Aborigines, uh, Australian Aborigines, and it had something, I can't think of the details of it, it had something to do. Okay, he, he was... He was reading about the praying mantis, a hero symbol in the Bushman mythology. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, he was at home on the 14th floor of a building in Manhattan, had an urge to open a window, which he rarely did, and a praying mantis stood on the rim of his window. So what are the odds of that? <laughs> well, that's a really low probability one. Um, yeah. That is a really low, because there he is writing about it, and right. there is the, and, and I have two other stories of people writing about something, and that what they're writing about appears at their door, and wow. so this this becomes a, a, what I call an archetypal theme that right. I haven't thought about in coincidences that you write about it and it shows up right it, re, it shows mm-hmm. up right there, <laughs> and uh, we're get, we're coming to the end of the segment and. I want to be able to tell our listeners and you why I started talking, why when I went from the stink bug to um, to Jung's story. Um, and I did that because I said uh, that Jung might have made that story up. And one of my colleagues there said, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening. You are listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Bernie Beitman, MD, on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. And our guests are Trish and Rob McGregor. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought provoking tell all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades, there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings, slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From Out of the Woodwork will take you from 1899 
to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com. Welcome back to CC with BB, connecting with coincidence, synchronicity, spoken here. <laughs> Our guests are Rob and Trish McGregor, prolific writers and um, metaphorical uh, cyclone creators in their <laughs> place in, in Florida, where they kind of, what, what they're writing about with all the inner inner journey ideas, including synchronicity, uh, they're, I think they create a little bit more than the average person of coincidences by doing what they're doing. Well, how can people enhance their abilities to see the future? Well, for one thing, you can follow impulses. I, I'm, I find that when you have an impulse to do something, I mean, assuming it's not going out and shooting somebody, but an impulse to take a different direction on your way to work or whatever it would be, um, that's one way. Also, I'm gonna, let me let me comment on that one, Fritz, yeah. because okay, what I I want to differentiate between impulse, like wanting to shoot somebody, mm -hmm. get mad, or like wanting to eat that 15 donut or something. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's and, not the impulse. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> that I, I want to be able to help all of us develop a better language for the kinds of messages we get that are not particularly rational, but are coming through our intuitive capacities. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're referring to. You're referring to not impulse really, but right. intuitive messages that like intuitive can mean inner teacher, you know, like tuition uh, right. or tutor uh, to be able to find among the many or several different voices we have inside uh, those intuition, those voices within intuition that we want to follow kind of like what Rob was doing with the cat right uh, and with the with his billfold mm -hmm. and that that's why i ask you to to describe it because that feeling of kind of knowing of not kind of but knowing and knowing not knowing how you know is what i want to be able to help our listeners and others to be able to do more regularly so please continue other ways to right to be precognitive yeah i think the very first thing though is to be open to the possibility that you can glimpse the future if you think it's impossible, then it's probably not going to happen. Uh, so your 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 belief will be proven correct. Uh, believing if, is believing is seeing. Yes, sir. Yeah. And also it, paying attention to signs and symbols in uh -huh. your environment. I think yeah. that's really important. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. we live in an ocean of signs and symbols that talk to each other constantly, and if we're open to to hearing it, that that's important. It's part of intuition. Now, so if you were if you were to say that to David Hand or something, we live in an ocean of sign and symbols. <laughs> how would you convince somebody? Let's say not not a real somebody who says not true, but somebody who might be on the edge of wanting to at least consider it. How would you convince somebody of that? Okay. Okay. I, wait. I got the story. Yeah. All right. Suppose <laughs> suppose you're working on a creative yeah. project. Okay, and just as you're thinking about it, mulling over an idea, you look up. And you see a hawk flying overhead. The hawk is saying what the hawk is saying symbolically is look at the bigger picture. That kind of interpretation. Yeah. And okay. Also, I think this would be something that uh, could be done statistically. You you take find out people who are interested in mysteries of the unknown, the paranormal, and people who are not, and see who uh, has the most synchron synchronicities in their life. I would say that the, the people who are open and aware are going to have a lot more. Maybe he would have an explanation for that too. But uh, I, th I think that, you know, the, the awareness and the, the being open to the possibilities is uh, the way. It's important. Without I think that, it's parapsychological research confirms, Rob, what you're just saying. Yeah, yeah. And oh, well, good. Other things are like keep it, keeping a journal, uh, paying attention to your dreams. All these things are, you know, putting you in the mindset for being able to uh, experience uh, synchronicities. And yeah, that's good. That's events. good. Yeah. Does, so, this, does this David good. ever have synchronicities? <laughs> Say that again? No, does I don't. It, yeah, he's he, a statistician. 
Yeah, he had one where he had uh, well one where somebody as he was getting his book out and getting before he got known about it. It's kind of like where you were with your hurricanes. Mm -hmm. um, somebody wrote a book about a statistician who who went to the same university that he did that was studying uh, low probability events and was married to somebody that did like what his wife did. Um, and he, he just misses that as uh, just a low probability event. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Another thing, another thing is uh, setting an intention. I mean, uh, attempting to, uh, in a sense, create uh, an experience of uh, something. Yeah, like let's say that you have, you, let's say you, you need an answer to something. So on your way out the door, if, on your way to work, you say, okay, the first thing I hear on the radio is going to answer my question. <laughs> yeah, that's what that, I, that sometimes yeah. works. I remember one incident, uh, I was going outside and I said, I want something unusual to happen on this trip. Well, that was a mistake thing. <laughs> a truck pulled out in front of me, and I almost slammed into the back of it. And there's a big sign on the back that says, caution. And it was, to me, that was a message. Uh, be careful what you're asking for. Uh, but then I went on to Starbucks to, uh, to get a cappuccino, and I hand them $50, and they say, uh, I, I don't have any chance. You can just have it. So I got a free cappuccino out of the deal, too. <laughs> And the the idea of waiting for the information to appear by asking for it and then looking is very similar to what creative people do about dreaming and sleeping. Mm -hmm. I have this question, and I used to do this quite a bit. I, I don't do it much anymore now that I'm remembering it, where I, where I would want to figure out something and go to sleep on it, and somehow I would come up with something uh, in the morning. Yeah, that that happens right. a lot. Yeah. So, so the list. I'm, go ahead. Yeah, uh, when I'm stuck, uh, like I'm, I'm working on a novel right now. When I get stuck, I can't move ahead. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm getting blocked. I, yeah. I do something like take a shower, and suddenly all these ideas are floating into me, and it's just a relaxing. Uh, just getting into a relaxed state opens opens the mind, opens the consciousness to uh, uh, to creativity. Uh, yes. Yes. So we're running down uh, a very good question, um, the ways in which people can enhance their abilities to see the future. And the first one, uh, and maybe there are more, but the first one is you got to think it's possible. Right. Because believing is seeing. Second, you got to, I say, differentiate impulse from other messages, but try to tune into your intuition. Uh, another is to be able to suggest that uh, you might find answers not only through dreams, but through walking outside and being able to uh, and see an answer from a radio show or something that you see. Uh, signs the, and symbols, yeah. Signs and symbols. So what are some of the other ways uh, people can enhance their ability to see the future? Um, I think uh, you know, meditation is, re is one way. Meditation. Yeah, relaxation. Uh, Anything where you can calm the mind and uh, just open yourself. Uh, and um, when I play with my dogs, I sometimes have, you know, I'm, I'm more open to the future, to tuning in on precognitive events. It's a, it's a funny thing uh, about the, about dogs. Uh, in in ancient Greece, um, uh, the word um, cynic uh, came from dog-like. Uh, really. Or, where, yeah, where, where Diogenes um, was trying to get people to be more dog-like, uh, mm -hmm. which, which m I think meant to be more in the present, because it's, to me, there's no coincidence that dog is the reverse of God. Um, yeah. Right. Th th there's something about being in the here and now that dogs do. I love that you can just drop them down someplace and they're there. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> and they're always happy, you know. They're, I mean, they're always ready to go, too. They don't have to uh, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that just that, parenthetically, that, that dogs can do that f for people, is get them more cynical uh, in the old meaning of it, being like a dog. So well, the, Diogenes, Diogenes was the one who was always looking for the truth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Looking for an honest man. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, another way to do it, that the future uh, is 
become writers. Uh, to, <laughs> I mean, you're, that's, that's what, what, what drove you to write this book? What are you trying to tell people um, about it? And what are you trying to tell people in your next book about uh, spirituality? You know, Bob and I were talking about this the other day. We've been we've been on this journey with with the paranormal and synchronicity. I, I've been on it since I was probably in my sixteen, and so all the writing is just an expression, really, of of this interest. Uh-huh. When we first when we first met, I was working as a newspaper reporter, and I was actually interviewing Trish, who is uh, teaching at Florida <laughs> International University. Uh, and uh, we have uh, about a minute. We have about a minute left. OK. And uh, one <clears throat> of the first questions she asked me is, uh, do you know what synchronicity is? And I said, yeah, I think I do have heard the term. And, uh, and then I thought he's a keeper. <laughs> and, and we ended up uh, our first attempt to write a book was about synchronicity early in the in the early 80s. And uh, we couldn't do it at that time. We just didn't have the. The, 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 the skills. experience and the skills, but uh, you know that it did come back years later. <laughs> it did, it did, and uh, and you're now you're writing about, con- uh, about your next book is about connecting with spirits, right? Yeah, and spirit contact. You know how 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 anybody really can connect with spirit. I mean, you you experienced that when your dad died. Yes. You know, it's, and it's, I, I, my grandfather uh, came into my life uh, at a good time too on one of the Jewish holidays on Yom Kippur. Oh, that's uh, so, good. So I, it was it was pretty. It seemed pretty real enough to me. And how you tell the difference between yourself and others is another problem. But right. that's that's another question. And we're come to the end of our radio show. It's gone really quickly, and it's been a delight having oh, been you great. with us. Thank you, Brian. You're, you're a terrific host. enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Glad to have you. You've been listening to the Connecting with Coincidence on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. And our guests have been authors Rob and Trish McGregor. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. 
You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.